Good day. My name is Brian Smith. I'm a student at Full Sail University. I'm going for my mobile gaming masters and I'm working on my capstone project, World War I Flying Circus. And in fact, I've got it up and running here on my antique Galaxy S5 phone. And uh, I've done a couple of modifications just to kind of get a handle on performance. You can see on the bottom of the screen, right there is an FPS of uh, frames per second that I'm rendering. A uh, World War I Flying Circus has two configuration settings. In fact, I'll do that over here. The smooth animations, which is at the bottom, I can change that to off. And then we're telling World War I Flying Circus, I'm looking for 15 frames per second. So I can kind of adjust that uh, for the high performance here though. We'll go over to back up to the 30 frames per second. Okay. So um, that's, uh, that's the, uh, some of the configuration. And also too, just to kind of debug uh, to see if I have any um, uh, performance problems with some of the artifacts on the screen. I got rid of the skybox. I got rid of the ground plane. Um, all the objects are low poly. Uh, so they're really not that terribly complex about complex of objects. In fact, I only have three of them um, in the game, uh, two biplanes and a balloon. And in fact, uh, at any given time, there's only two of them that are being rendered. You know, here we have one biplane and one balloon. I got some particle effects going on there because I just shot down the balloon. So the um, so the game is not a should not be terribly uh, burdensome in terms of the G, the CPU and the GPU for sure. Uh, but on this antique Galaxy S5, I do find myself GPU bound. So. Um, but I'm getting the frames per second that I need, the 15 frames per second or the 30 frames per second. Uh, so let me take you through some of the, uh, the performance things that I'm seeing. So I'm going to share my screen, please. And here we are. I've got and so we're inside of Unity, and I've, this is the taking a look at the Android. Um, so this is my Galaxy S5 that is running away there, and I'm just running through some frames. So this is actually with the um, particles going on, but, um, and so, yeah, let me just uh, stop, grab a frame and kind of get a, a hint at what's going on here so we can take a peek at what's going on. So again, the, uh, we've got, uh, two objects on there, the biplane, the balloon, and we've got the, um, the particle systems, the, the balloon on fire going away there. So if I take a look at, uh, just one of the frames, it's just going to grab, grab a frame here. Maybe this got a little peak to it, or it's just a kind of the average frame here. You can see this uh, on um, this wait for presentation on the uh, the special the, the graphics um, CPU thread. And uh, if we kind of oh, I was going to I was going to uh, show you in um, the Unity's webpage about what these different things mean, but um, I'll just I'll just talk through it. Uh, I'm not sharing that that, that side of the machine. So for that, uh, it says, hey, this is basically, it could be CPU bound, could be GPU bound, but you have to take a look then at the render thread. And here in the render thread, it is this uh, present, uh, present frame, present frame. And uh, so this is an indication that this is largely GPU bound. And so this is an antique um, graphics card. That's uh, it's an ARM, old ARM card that's in the, uh, the Galaxy S5. Pretty good for its day, but it is uh, quite dated. So this is an indication here that with this uh, wait time that we got a the CPU is waiting for the the GPU and then the GPU is busy working on the present frame. This is an indication that we're GPU bound, and that's why I was trying to crunch down as much of the uh, graphics and the um, some of the difficulty that uh, any any uh, GPU would have, no matter if it was a powerful, more modern uh, iPhone um, or on my uh, my antique Galaxy S5. So, so that's where was kind of the hint at, you know, what I was trying to do. But on the other side of it, I'm still maintaining my 30 frames per second um, performance. So what it's probably doing is it's probably, you know, for, for one frame, you know, the, the GPU work is actually uh, inside the player loop here is actually, you know, very minimal. It's all just down here. So I'm, I'm doing all my work for the, you know, for the average frame here. You can see this kind of this lower uh, colors over here. I'm the others. And uh, you know, all, everything is happening here within about uh, six milliseconds. So great performance there. It's really the, the GPU that is is um, is bound in this in this situation. So let me uh, show you some of the things that I've been um, doing to try to. Um, well, here let me run through because it's not just uh, 
World War One Flying Circus is always running. And sure, there are some times at the, you know, the um, end of animations where I'm doing some extra mathematics um, in terms of you know, you know my my processing. If I'm changing scenes, I'm making a lot of uh, calls and all that. So there's some um, some CPU that's going on there. But really, it's always running, and it's never running anything that should be terribly taxing. But let me just run through the game. Start the recording here, and you can see it just uh, working away there. So I'm going to, I'm going to tell you what I'm going to be doing over here. So I'm going to go and start a balloon busting scenario. So we're just right at the, you know, back to balloon busting. I just say, I'm going to do the first scenario. I can hear the audio noise on the phone and I'm going to shoot down this balloon. So I'm going to go to changing the, the sliders and going up and down with my sliders. You can see on there, there's some additional work, you know, that's being done by the CPU uh, to kind of enable some of that animation and motions you know, uh, icons expanding and contracting. So I'm doing some extra work there. You can see that represented. So I'm going to uh, go straight at the balloon, straight stall, still got uh, frames per second as it's showing at 31. You can hear the machine gun noise, second balloon busting scenario, stall to the left. You can see there's some spikes in some of the activity, but basically we're just kind of doing the same rendering frame after frame after frame inside of the, inside the Unity. All right, third balloon dusting scenario, right stall. Oh, three hits in a row. I'm doing great. And so now we're all done. And well, actually, there's 27 balloon busting scenarios, but I've cut it down to three just so that it runs faster. We're still running at frames per second 31. And there the balloon is crashing away. And I've got the animations, uh, the uh, uh, particle systems going on. And so really, we're kind of experiencing the the same performance model going across there. So GPU bound, still getting the, the 31 frames per second. So if I switch to smooth animations, turning that off, and now I'm down to 16, 15 frames per second, and you can see I've got more time. I'm still, you know, the game is still running. I'm still rendering a, the particle systems. I've got balloons, I've got uh, the biplane that you're looking down on. It's just giving the system more time and I guess the interesting thing is, if I uh, stop this, grab a frame, the interesting thing is, is that I'm still, even with all that extra time, waiting for the, the, the GPU. And then if I take a look at that render thread, it is still that color for the, uh, this, that uh, current frame. So you're know, working on the present frame. So even with all the extra time um, on this system, I'm, you know, GPU bound, but even with all this going on, um, with all the different kinds of optimizations I've been working on, I'm going to take you through that uh, next. I'm still getting the, the 30 and 15 frames per second. There is the annoying, no, I'm going to cover that at the end. Um, but let me take you through, I'm going to do the stop sharing here. And I'm going to start sharing um, just my desktop here. I do want to take you through this. So this this was the you know kind of the uh, the smoking gun in terms of uh, for my Galaxy S5 and the performance. And uh, so this is the you know the, the this indicates that there's you know that could be GPU bound, and if it's camera renderer, then it's uh, CPU bound, but it's not that. And indeed, I'm on that present frame, and so its application is GPU bound, and or it's waiting for the the VSync. I've turned off the VSync, and so that's what I wanted to do is take you through um, what I have done in terms of just cleaning up, optimizing some of the performance uh, specifically for my game rather than taking all the, you know, the, the Unity defaults. So I've been keeping track of everything in my project design document in case I need to go back to this. It's also, I put it in the, um, you know, the onboarding um, section over here for developer cold start. Okay, so um, some of the things I've done is the in Unity, they have a you know, low, medium, and high tier uh, graphics. Uh, so it's basically tiers of systems. And I don't know where the, uh, the Galaxy S5 fits in terms of the tiers. Um, and it really, you know, in terms of Unity, we, you don't have to know, which is a, a good thing. But basically for the low and medium tier, tier I turn on everything into the, you know, the simplest, uh, the, the uh, things that give us the best performance. So. You know, not as great graphics, but uh, the best performance. And then, um, so I did that for the, uh, 
uh, different things. And then for the for the high tier things, I you know I have you know good perform or good graphics and uh, and acceptable performance there. There's that uh, don't vsync uh, the the vertical synchronization that I mentioned. So don't do that. I don't have to wait for that in terms of a 50 hertz or 60 hertz you know kind of system and all that because I'm really not that concerned about high frame rates. It is just you know good solid fun game. That's my uh, that's my objective. So for some um, if the, the resolution presentation, there's a 32 bit buffer that takes up a lot of memory. I don't need that. Um, and you can see here, I've got the references to some of the places where I found that. So I can go back to those references and, and remind myself, you know, one month, three months, you know, six years from now, about why did I make these kinds of choices? Um, another thing is just to keep the, the size of the game uh, smaller. I've, uh, I've got all the different icons and maneuvers. And I had them the max size as 2K, and that's way too big. So I've changed that to 128. Many of them are not, many of them are already smaller than 128, but it just kind of provides kind of a, a set maximum so that if they do get too big in the future, that I can just, they'll be just automatically kind of crunched down. So the other is, uh, you know, for the artwork, I've just made sure that the read, write enabled for all the different textures is off because I'm not editing any kind of bitmaps. I'm just applying these textures so they're read only. And so I don't need to have that because it doubles the amount of memory for that. And then the, uh, there is no physics in, um, in World War One Flying Circus. So bullets aren't actually hitting anything, biplanes and, uh, you know, don't actually, you know, um, intersect or they don't actually collide. There's no, there's no physics. There's no gravity. Uh, nothing happens in, um, in terms of physics in in terms of inside of world war one flying circus as far as unity is concerned so make sure all the the physics is uh turned off got some uh, rendering uh, pipeline suggestions that i made i just recently made those two just to kind of uh, see if i can improve the um the the profiler is showing me for my galaxy s5 and it didn't seemingly make any difference there but you know it probably will will help out over the long term in terms of the wide variety of devices that are out there. So that's the, uh, the kinds of things I did for performance. I've also two, um, uh, based upon an earlier suggestion from Professor Penny, I, uh, working more, I'm getting towards the string builders rather than the strings. All my string building is handled in a routine in, um, in Unity. Um, so it's my localization. So this is where I do all my, um, uh, MRI, my machine readable information, my localization. So it's the uh, creating big dictionaries of all the different world's languages uh, right here. And then, um, and then as I'm about to put you know, informa new information up on the screen, when I change canvases, then it's, um, um, uh, then I, I pull that information in whatever the world's language that I'm working with. And I put that to the screen. Now this only happens, um, when I'm changing canvases, it's not happening inside of an update loop. So it's not like these strings were you know, building up you know, millions of them, but it would be, you know, hundreds, of, if not thousands, if you played long enough. And there could be some garbage collection then uh, because the strings are um, immutable. So with that, I am, anyway, I am changing to the string builder. String builder is a different kind of beast. And uh, so it's not like I can just, um, you know, copy and paste and make the changes. So I've, yeah, I'm making the making the changes, and uh, um, so I've I've done it like here is I've got partial, and uh, you know I still need to finish converting to it. So I'm making you know, the notes and all that, but most of them I have changed, uh, but there are a few that um, you know that I still need to be working with the string builder. Um, so you can hear that anyway. Here's working with the the string builder versus the the strings. So um, so I've been working so this basically about a day's worth of work, a little bit plus, plus a little extra, been working kind of more focused on performance. Now, what I still haven't uh, found yet is uh, where, and I've seen this um, uh, not frequently, but from time to time, and I know Professor Penny has seen this too, but where the game will just kind of drag into uh, very low frames per second, and you know, something is going on there. And it's not just garbage collecting because it, it lasts for a period of time. Uh, so there is something going on. So, um, so with this, this is the final, the, the final comment is that um, I haven't found the smoking gun. I haven't found why from time to time 
the game just kind of drags to you know to a near halt where the, uh, the user interface becomes nearly non-responsive or even non-responsive. Uh, so what I've done is I've done a whole bunch of things to try to improve the performance uh, in inside the World War One Flying Circus inside of Unity, but no smoking gun. Haven't found out exactly what the problem is. And in my day, uh, we call this voodoo problem solving. So I really didn't know what the problem was. I really didn't understand it. And all I did was try to change things that will probably try to help this problem. But I don't know if I've solved the problem or not. So we call that voodoo problem solving. It's like throwing chicken bones at the problem and dancing around a bonfire and hoping that what you're doing is actually solving any kind of performance problem. So I don't know it yet. Uh, time will tell. And uh, so I'll keep monitoring the performance. But I've made a good, I think, solid pass at just optimizing Unity's graphics pipe, uh, rendering pipeline plus other things. I know I'm keeping, I, I know I'm keeping, I write, I think I, I write fairly efficient CPU code. So I'm keeping that tight and I can see that in the, the profiler that my CPU code is very tight. It really is just the rendering of the, of the graphics. The game is not that complex. So the graphics rendering should be, you know, should perform well on almost all uh, devices, even old antique Galaxy S5s. Um, so hopefully with some of the changes I made, the voodoo problem will go away, uh, but time will tell. So thank you very much. Um, let me know what you think in terms of um, uh, uh, in terms of other things that I can do for performance, other places I can go, other resources, um, anything, you know, a, a professor that may be able to just sit down and kind of work through everything because I'm learning all this and so i'm not uh, infinitely wise and so if there are mistakes i'm making or other things i could be doing uh, please let me know have a good day